So Newton measured, this was in 1690s, so this is about 300 years ago. Now Newton wanted to understand how gravity, the same reason that the apple falls there is the same reason that the Earth goes around the sun. So this is the force of gravity here. Now we're going to drop it here. You can think of this as a rock. We're going to explain the difference between a rock and a human is that the rock is only subjected to one force. The gravitational force works on it. Now humans are subjected to two forces, which means that they're subjected to the electromagnetic force which is, and the gravitational force. The electromagnetic force has two parts. One is the, the air, you ever have been sparked when you go to get the, the clothes out of the laundry? It's like static cling. Or like when you're walking on a carpet and you touch something in the winter and it sparks you? But that's the elect that's electric force. Now magnets, that magnets, when you touch something like this, them over here, you see that? That's the magnetic force. Okay. So now when the, when the electric force and the magnetic force come together, they're called what's the electromagnetic force. That was discovered after Newton by this person named James Maxwell. I'm going to show you what the difference is here. So we drop the rock down here, we'll, we'll time it, and it falls in one second. Now, if we drop it down here, the electromagnetic force can work on it. The way this works, the hand down with me. Okay, so I saw that it took seven seconds. To interject, during the Zero Theism for Kids lecture class we gave 17 days ago at this point, in the lecture, two new kids arrived in the class. So what you're about to see in part three is a review of some of the slides covered in the previous sessions to get the two new kids up to date. It is. The way that worked is because of magnets. Okay, so this is a real strong magnet. The way this works is the, the same force. When this goes down, it pulls the electrons in the, in the metal and it makes them start rotating when it's going down. And when the electrons rotate, they curl and they, they create what's called electromagnetic force that points upward against gravity. So it slows the, the magnet when it's going down versus over here. To go into a little more detail on this gravitational force as compared to the electromagnetic force experiment, religious people often ask, well, if there is no God, what's the difference between, say, a rock and a human? The most famous example of this was pointed out in 1802 by William Paley in his watch analogy argument. He has said that, suppose we were walking along in a field out in the middle of nowhere and we came across first a rock and then a little later a watch. He said, when we come to inspect the watch, we perceive what we could not discover in a stone, that its several parts are framed and put together for a purpose, and that they are so formed and adjusted so as to produce motion, the ticking of the dial, and that motion is so regulated as to point out the hour of the day its purpose. On this model, Paley asserted that, like the watch, the human is similar in that it was framed and put together for a purpose, whereas the rock was not framed and put together for a purpose. And the difference between the three groupings here is that this selection in the middle here was designed with a purpose by God, whereas things like the rock had no design in mind. So this is the way these two work together. So let's say when you go to school and you, you, you go find the most popular person in school, right? Like the hottest car, the hottest girl, someone who's real popular. Being with the plastics was like being famous. People looked at you all the time and everybody just knew stuff about you. So let's say you go to high school and you want to be, you want to say you become the homecoming queen or like the captain of the football team. A lot of people are going to try to come up to you or that new girl moved here from Africa. I saw Katie Heron wearing army pants and flip-flops, so I bought army pants and flip-flops. That Katie girl is hot. She might even be hotter than Regina George. Say, say you get to someone you want to ask on a, a date later on, like a friend you want to hang out with, her, but you're somehow you go up to them and the force starts slowing you down. That's these two forces working on you. Same way that there's a rock. This, this force is only worked on by the gravitational force. I hear Regina George is dating Aaron Samuels again. The two were seen canoodling at Chris Iso's Halloween party, and they've been inseparable ever since. To 
go into a little more detail on this point in respect to how the electromagnetic force operates on us in society as compared to how the gravitational force operates on us in society. Shown here is the structure of the electromagnetic force. It's comprised of two parts. One called the electric field, which points vertical, and another called the magnetic field, which points in a direction perpendicular to the electric field. And they both oscillate, one going like this, one going up, and move through space. The most common example of the electromagnetic force is light, which as we've talked about, for example, the light coming out of the screen here is a type of force called bosons. Now light, in more detail, is comprised of electromagnetic field across the electromagnetic spectrum in the range of 600 to 700 nanometers, and it's made of all the colors of the rainbow which you can see if you shine white light through a uh, prism, it splits light into the colors. Now, there's two types of photons. One type, which comprises light, is called, are called photons on shell, which means they obey the nature of the interaction between energy and momentum, according to Einstein's theory of special relativity. The other are called photons off-shell, and they do not obey the energy and momentum relationships of special relativity, and they are made of virtual particles, and they tend to be found in the electric field by itself or the magnetic field by itself. Now, in respect to the magnet copper tube experiment versus magnet cardboard tube experiment, what occurs is that when we drop the magnet through the cardboard tube, there's no field particle interaction or force exchange, so the magnet falls according to the gravitational force, or the gravitational force moves the magnet through unit distance and does work on it, and falls at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, when we drop the magnet through the copper tube, a different situation occurs. The When we take the positive end of the magnet, a phenomenon discovered by Heinrich Lenz in the 1833, after reading some of the work of James Maxwell, he found that if you take the positive end of the magnet and move it towards a ring of copper, such as a ring of this copper, the magnetic field lines will point out of the magnet, which is B here, and cause electrons in the copper or metal to start rotating, making a current. And when the current moves in the copper, you put your thumb in the direction of the current and it'll create a, a magnetic field that points in the direction opposite to the moving magnet, which is called induced magnetic field. So in the experiment, which is called Lenz's Law Experiment, or the magnet copper tube experiment, when we drop the magnet through the tube, the gravitational force moves the magnet per unit distance and then this could be conceptualized as human moving through society. And the copper tube thought of this society, which is a different uh, chemical and atomic structure. The atoms in the copper react to the moving magnet or the force of the moving, moving magnet by causing what's called a, they create their own induced magnetic field, which points in the direction of the magnetic field and slows the magnet, which is a way of maintaining the status quo of the system and is otherwise known as the electromagnetic gravitational version or of the Chatelier's principle. So when we drop the magnet through the copper tube, there's a slowing. And the magnet fills at a slower rate than would normally be actuated if gravitation actuated on it by itself which is the same as when a human moves through a society versus a human jumping off a diving board. Okay, so everybody can pass this around and work on it. Now, if you put it in here, you can see, see how it goes down? It goes down real slow. Well, you didn't do this one.
everybody just pass that around. You can see how the uh, electromagnetic force works. Thank you.